Hey everybody, Basil and Will with Grayson Hobby, and today we're going to show you a new feature with the Lemon RX Gen 2 receivers. Yes, these receivers now feature text gen programming, which makes them much easier to program from scratch. And what that means is you can now program on a menu, either with the Spectrum Radio and the Radio Master Edge TX running a 4 1. So no more fiddling with the buttons and lights colors and, all that and stuff. lights and magical configurations and checking your manual every five seconds to see if you did it right. Yep. Now you can see if you did it. So welcome to 2024, everybody who flies Spectrum. Okay, if you like this video, subscribe. So those of you familiar with the Lemon Gen 2 receivers, these are the new stab stabilized receivers from Lemon RX. They are DSM X protocol. Um, they have seven or 10 channel capability. They are three axis gyro, roll pitch and y'all. These are the newest versions though. These are the new text gen edition. For those of you unfamiliar with the text gen, text gen is a menu on either a Spectrum or an Edge TX radio that allows you to do programming through the stick commands. So if you've used one of these before, you're familiar with the red and green lights and making them turn on and off and flash or stuff like that through stick commands, which can be a little overwhelming for people because you're having to go back and forth with the, little ma uh, the manual. This gives you a visual reference of what you're changing, how it's changing, and essentially what you've done to the receiver to set up the gyro. So it makes programming these a world of a difference. And forget talking about, we're just gonna show you what I'm talking about because seeing is believing. Have you subscribed yet? <laughs> no good. Uh, two radios that we're gonna use in this video. We're gonna use a DX9 to show you guys with Spectrum. We're gonna use a TX16 running Edge TX to show you guys with the, the Radio Master with the four in one. Okay, so first things first, I wanna show you guys how to bind the receiver. We're gonna use the Spectrum this one because it does have an auto config for the telemetry. First, I'm gonna plug in my battery. So any tips or tricks you have to do with so it? So we're gonna use the bind button. Instead of using the bind plug, we're gonna use the button on this receiver. The bind button's right here. This is your change to go in the menus and that's the fail safe button. So we're gonna use the bind plug there and I'm gonna plug in the battery and within a second or two, I'm gonna push and hold the bind button. After about three, four seconds, it goes into flashing. Then we're gonna bind the receiver or the radio. I can't do it this close, basically. You gotta... <laughs> can't swap the receiver, guys. So if you're too close, it won't bind. So you do need a little distance. I'll walk so away. recommend about three to five feet or so. I'll, say I'll walk away. So now we're gonna bind. And you'll see on the radio, telemetry and then it's going to auto config now this has the latest firmware on the spectrum so auto configuring i believe it's 2.1 yeah 2.10 if you have older firmware on your radios you may not have the menus you may not have text gen make sure you go on your uh, spectrum and update your radio to have those menus otherwise this is not going to work for you if you find value in this video be sure to check out gracenobby.com for all your lemon rx needs everything ships from atlanta georgia right here uh, everything we talked about today will be in the description below. Once you're bound uh, to get into the menu, you'll see that you got a lot of data information, battery voltage, temperature, uh, receiver voltage, stuff like that is popping up. Um, these are the auto config telemetries and you can adjust them, put more stuff, less stuff on there, depending on what you want. So on the screen, you're able to see your current settings for your aileron elevator rudder. If they're New, uh, normal or reverse for gyro direction. You're able to see the status of your always on uh, switch on or off. So currently it's off. Your master gain, which I believe on this one is gonna be on this dial here. And that is programmable depending on your radio. So you have the master gain pot you can program. You have stabilization switch, what channel it's on. In this case, it's gonna be aux two or channel seven. You have your flight stabilization mode. This is currently off, so this is only a receiver right now in this configuration. Your flight stabilization switch is channel seven. Your fail safe is currently turned off. Now, if we push the fail safe button, I believe that will change. It didn't say it. Um, telemetry is turned on. Your mode, this is a normal tail mode. So this is a standard vertical uh, elevator. And then you got the gain pots. What I really like about this text gen is you can see right now they're all on 50, but if I move the gain pots, if you're looking at the screen here, it's actually actively moving as I move the gain pots. And of course I got it there. So if you want to fine tune, you can set it. And 
it's nice because you can jot down what exact numbers you had. If you're trying to set up a plane or you might be moving a receiver from plane to plane or stuff like that, or you have a couple planes similar set up, you can kind of get a reference of what you want to do. Now keep in mind, every gyro might be slightly different, so I wouldn't use it as gospel, the same numbers for every plane, even if they're the same. I think each gyro is a little different. But when you're setting up your receiver, you can fine tune it. And what I really like about that is using the master gain is you can actually disable two of the gyros so that say the aileron and the elevator and only do the rudder. So you can adjust the master gain to figure out where you want to be on the gain and then fine tune it, save, you know, take mental note, change that gain pot, move to the next one, zero everything out, and then do for each individual axis. So it helps you in a, just a couple flights or within a flight, touch and goes kind of thing, you can set them up and get your gyros dialed in much better than you could before because you're able to see the numbers you were on before. You're not guessing where that gain pot is. Um, especially if you have a hard to reach flight controller inside a fuselage where it's, you can't really see the gain pots. Um, so that's a really cool feature, being able to see where your master gain is and where your individual gain pots are physically set, as well as what direction they're on. You don't have to look at the LEDs anymore. You can tell if your gyro is on or off, um, stuff like that. It's really nice to be able to have this interface. This, I guess it's a interface connection, which makes things a lot easier. It's kind of like having a touchscreen phone versus an old dial rotary, I guess. I don't know. But... It makes things a lot better, and this is definitely a huge leap forward for the stabilized receivers, which is further closing the gap between super, super expensive name brand, we won't say, <coughs> Spectrum. So now the radio's done it's the auto config for telemetry on the Spectrum. We're just going to scroll over to the right. Within the first minute of being powered up, you're able to get into the text gen menu. Both sticks, bottom corners, and now you're in the setup. So from there... All you do is you go through, you can see the menus changing. This is how you change like your door, uh, your throw rates, gyro control, um, dual ailerons. I want to turn on the full configuration, save and exit, exit don't save, change the mode right now. They come defaulted with the stabilization off. You can turn it um, on and that's um, VTAIL stabilization switch. You can change what channel it's on whether the gyro is always on or not. Telemetry, you can turn on or off. The failsafe, you can reset the failsafe or cancel what you have in it. And you can reset the receiver if you just completely screw things up. Um, calibrate your voltage, calibrate the current sensor, and then there's info. Like this uh, this software is on 430.24. Which so software, the radio or the This receiver? is the receiver software. Okay. Spectrum, no, does this work the same way with the Yes, yeah, so the, the TX-16 is going to be similar. However, getting into the menu is going to be a little different. So with the Spectrum, at least in our case with the DX-9, guys, I don't own any other Spectrum radios. Actually, I don't own a Spectrum radio anymore. This is Basil's old DX-9. Um, there may be different ways of setting it up. I've heard of some things you have to turn on the text gen menu. This one auto configured with the new firmware. I'm assuming Spectrum is going to do that with most of them. If not, you're going to have to go into your manual to see how you turn on text gen. But once text gen is enabled, that's how you get into it. So let's show the different menus. I want to actually run through both menus with both receivers connected. I got two receivers connected, and I'm just going to run through both radios showing, but we are going to show you how to get into the TX-16 menu. Um, so actually, let me leave that plugged in. We're going to put this receiver here. Then we're going to turn on a TX-16. And I've already bound this receiver here just to save time for the video. Switch warning. You'll see this is a 10 channel, but menus are the same. It's not going to change anything there. So while he's saying that, the Duke Text Gen is in the 7 channel and, and the, 10 channel. the 10 channel. So those two models with the stabilization, Gen 2 receiver stabilized, also have Text Gen now. Okay. Um, so in order to get into the Text Gen menu on a bound 4-in-1 Radio Master running Edge TX, uh, I believe you have to have version 2.8 or newer. Again, another firmware, which is fairly recent, doesn't have to be the newest. Um, but you have to have text gen enabled in one of the menus. So we're gonna hit the system button. We're gonna to go to DSM smart telemetry, and then we're gonna scroll down. I just give myself a little more room here. Uh, we're gonna go down to text gen. Once it's in there, again, it has to be within about the first minute of the receiver being on to get into program mode. Same with the spectrum. Sticks bottom corners, and you'll see it switches to setup. It's not gonna benefit you having one over the other. They program pretty much the same way. 
So you got change direction. Move the other on tab. You got change elevator. Change the rudder, and that's the gyro sensing direction. Um, if your channel is moving the wrong, like if your control surface is moving the wrong way, you still reverse it in your radio, just like a normal uh, servo. However, if the gyro is compensating in the wrong direction, that's where you use these settings. Um, so you got aileron, elevator, rudder, and then dual ailerons. Um, this is if you have dual ailerons. You'll also need this um, mode to access some of the extra modes. So if you don't have dual ailerons on, you won't be able to get to the modes in the stabilization modes that require dual ailerons. So um, we're going to leave those off. And then show config. Default is off. It's just the four basic settings and then the saving. So we're going to go ahead and turn that on. You'll see all venues, menus available. Go over. Save and exit. That's if you want to save the settings. We're not going to do that yet. Save and don't save. that. So if you did a change, you're not sure if you did a change, you just want to exit the menu without doing any modifications, then you do that one. Change mode. This is where you go from receiver only to that's a normal tail, vertical tail, dual uh, delta, normal tail. So they did go a little out of order on these, depending on the thing, looks like. So there's normal. Delta and V-tail. So if you got a V-tail rudder, if you have elevons like a flying wing, or if you have a normal traditional tail surface on a plane. Um, if you had dual ailerons turned on, there would be two more options to choose from there. And then stabilizing switch is menu nine. That's if you want it on channel seven or if you want it on channel five. You can see you can switch between the two there. And then the next menu is always on. Say you're using a radio that doesn't have enough switches to have that extra switch and you need channel 5 for flaps, retracts, whatever, then you can turn the stabilizer always on. Not recommend it, but it is able, uh, able to be done. Telemetry, you can turn off or on. If you don't want any of the sensors, you want this more basic of a receiver, you can turn off telemetry sensors. Why? I'm not sure. Um, but you can if you Save want. Save power maybe? I don't know. Eh, it might run a lower voltage without telemetry. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Uh, you can cancel the fail safe. That's if you need to reset it. Uh, reset the receiver if you just Boink the settings and you need to reset it. Calibrate your voltage. Say your voltage readings are way off. You can calibrate it by doing 8.4 volts into the uh, the sensor and then calibrating there. You can also calibrate current. Uh, you will need the XT60 style current sensor version if you're going to do that, which I don't have. You will need that sensor to be able to calibrate current. You cannot do it with just the voltage probe. And then... System info is the last setting. So you'll see these are programmed the same. But basically the menus are very close to the same. Pretty much, well, they are the same. They're textual.